Many times when women would take workshops, they would share that they had never had a sexual fantasy. And I think that's true because our normal sexual development, right? If we're progressing and our hand has been moved away from our genitals and we haven't connected to the body, Mm -hmm. how are we going to move forward with fantasy and learning about the things that inspire us? Right. Sexual repression happens not only in the body, but also in the mind, right? Because repressing sexual thoughts helps to repress your body. If you're not thinking about sex, then you're not going to have sex. So it's a result of instilling, right, guilt and shame. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I had a dirty thought. In fact, I think there's a scripture verse. I remember this as a child where it said anything that you thought would be yelled from the rooftops when Jesus came back. And I remember as a little girl sitting on the edge of my bed praying, saying, please, please, I'm so sorry I had that thought because I would think all kinds of horrible things. Mm -hmm. And I was going to be found out. And I think that's what we're all afraid of with fantasy that will be found out. But, you know, 99.9% of people's sexual fantasies are quite vanilla. Yes, yes. And I think, too, Freud also got into the act by, you know, somehow, like, if you have a thought that, that that's what you really want to do. And with fantasy, that is not true. 80% of my fantasies I would never, ever want to do in real life. Because then it's not fun anymore. Then it's not a fantasy. The whole point is I'm thinking of something I would never do, something completely taboo. Fantasy means make believe. It means play. It's not reality, right? Fantasy is the opposite of reality. It's like playing dress up, Mm -hmm. right? When we're little girls, we always want to dress up. Yes. And so that's not real. You're pretending. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of fun. In a way, that's what the heart of fantasy is. It's like letting myself go there. What would it be like Mm -hmm. if while I was touching myself, someone was watching me? Mm. What would that feel like? Would that give me a charge? Yes. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Or what if I was with a partner that was completely unsuitable? Mm. Maybe it's someone I know, my best friend's partner, or maybe it's a oh a fan a distant family member. Oh, the, yes. the third cousin once removed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And all of that is arousing because taboo, mm-hmm. novelty, you know, things that are outside of our everyday lives, that's what arouses us. So, Carlin, how do we get started with with having uh, sexy thoughts, if if we've never allowed ourselves to explore that? I think you have to try things on, mm-hmm. right? You have to sample. Mm-hmm. And in this module, there are lots of samples of things. You know, audio erotica, written erotica, dip your toe in. Mm-hmm. Think about a certain scenario. And that said, it doesn't mean that something that's explicitly sexual will be what turns you on. Mm -hmm. you might find going barefoot in the grass, right? Laying down in the grass with the sun hitting your body. That could be really arousing for you. I had a client I was working with and we were trying to connect to, you know, fantasy. And what she really was aroused by was time-lapse footage of flowers opening. Ah, yes. Right. So that's why I don't like saying turned on. It's more like what inspires me? Right, right. Yes, yes. Nature can be very arousing. Um, now, with with my mind, like I can imagine myself, you know, like in a forest, you know, on on like mossy ground, right? You know, getting that feeling of the moss under your bare skin and the smells. You know, I get into that. But now, for me, because of my very dirty mind, like all of a sudden the fairies are going to come out, you know, and maybe. <laughs> Yeah, the troll from under the bridge. <laughs> but but that's where my mind goes. But I've been practicing fantasy for a very long time. So I think starting out with just sensual thoughts is is a great way to begin. And I loved Carlin talk about when you made bread. Oh, I was making bread one day and I remember it was like my first apartment that I had mm-hmm. by myself. And what do you do? It's like, I'm going to make bread. (laughs) I've never made bread before in my life when I had the recipe. 
And I was standing by my kitchen counter, which was kind of high. And I was like kneading the dough together. It was still kind of sticky. And I was just putting it together on a ball. So I was using my core muscles and moving. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was probably flexing my pelvic floor muscle. Yeah. And then I had this thought of like, women have been doing this for millennia. Mm -hmm. Making bread. Mm -hmm. Right. It's something every household would do every morning. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's usually when your family leaves the house, right? To work, to go to school. So it's probably your only alone time. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I had this thought, I'm making the bread. I felt really aroused. I felt my vagina lubricate and a little drip came right down my inner thigh. Mm-hmm. And then I went off and I started imagining being bent forward, taken from behind. I don't know who it is, but I don't care because it feels good. And I can see, too, it's so sensual. You know, the smell, I've baked bread. So, you know, like the smell of the yeast and the dough, the feeling of the sticky dough on your fingers that, you know, as you knead it more, it kind of gels together. And it's just, it's a very soft, pillowy feel. I think I'll have to do some research on it. But I think that there's like, you know, a method, some country or some culture, they make bread, but it's like in the shape of vulvas. Of course. That's part of, and you know, right? Of course. I mean, doesn't it kind of feel like, you know, that sensual, like you're touching skin? I mean, you could just get out some crayons and some markers or some paints and start creating. And Betty used to always say that an artist looks at a canvas, there's nothing there, and you just throw something up and then you work it out. Mm -hmm. That's how she started in sexuality, Mm -hmm. is she started painting the nude, the masturbating nude, the orgy nude, the couple nude, the love picture, right? You could do that. Put on a piece of paper, things that you've seen before that you thought were interesting or imagining yourself in situations or just coloring nature. If you just get it all out and start Mm -hmm. doing, Mm -hmm. you'll channel, it will open, you'll let it out. And it will be there because really how we're wired, what we respond to, it's kind of in there. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. We've just repressed it ourselves because we've been told by society it's natural for us to think sexual thoughts. We're wired to do that. Um, So stop judging yourself and just give yourself those kind of experiences and and see where it leads. And uh, yeah, see what thoughts come up for you.